Hello from Dendrite Digital in Anaheim. Makers of the Virtue Data Processor. And Zipit, the website that shows you how to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I have here a spreadsheet for calculating the appropriate configuration of an MMCM for 720p um, HDTV. And uh, in this column we have my uh, system clock for my FPGA board. Here uh, we have the multiply factor and here's the divide factor. And uh, this is just a static number. This is just a, just a number that I started with. And below that I just add 0.125 since that's the the um, resolution of the MMCM on the Xilinx, Xilinx uh, Arctic 7. And then uh, over here, the divide factor is calculated by taking the input frequency or the input uh, megahertz, multiplying that by this number, and uh, and if you look at this formula, all it is is rounding. I'm rounding to the nearest 125 because, again, on Xilinx Arctic 7, uh, the resolution of the MMCM is 0.125. So if I'm to get a good answer here, I need to round it to the nearest 125. So uh, you take input, multiply it by the multiplier, and then you multiply it by 8, you round it to the nearest integer with zero digits to the, to the, uh, zero digits to the right of the decimal point, and then you, multi you uh, divide it by 8 to get that actual number, and then, uh, then the output comes from, uh, you get, you take, uh, A2, <laughs> take A2, multiply it by six, divide it by this, and you get this number over here in this column. And here's the target that we're trying to acquire and already you can see that it's pretty close here, 74.242424, etc. And we're aiming for that, but I think we can do better. And being a little slow isn't really uh, viable because a lot of devices, they need their data before, um, before they uh, process it. And so a little faster is a better than a little slower and I want something a little faster so uh, if we scroll down here you can see I went from the 600 megahertz all the way to 1200 megahertz and uh, again uh, that's the range of the FPGA I'm using uh, the MMCMs work uh, within a factor of two. So let's see if we can find a better fit for this. And if we come down here, uh, what, mm, seven, uh, they're pretty far. Six was a good, good deal. Uh, where? Oh, 74.24. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We hit our target. We hit our target with uh, a little over just just 0 .00742 <laughs> different. So, uh, here's the multiplier. 
here's the divider. Now, uh, let me get into the uh, code for uh, the MMCM. And uh, there's a slot where you can do a, 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 uh, a factor, a, a divider that's uh, got uh, some things after the decimal point. It's just the zero clock. The, the zero uh, clock allows you to do a, a uh, floating um, or a fixed point uh, division. An accurate clock is necessary for any display device to work properly. Interfacing computers with monitors, te television sets, and other display devices such as cameras are necessary. It's necessary to have an accurate synchronized clock with the display or video input system. So what I have here is uh, a, a set of uh, timing MMCMs. Um, you can see I've got the 10 times uh, the pixel frequency of, of 720p. I also have a VGA clock thrown in here. Since it's relatively slow, I was able to get a pretty close uh, fit for this. And uh, I'm using the 371.25 megahertz clock for uh, passing the data from the TMDS to um, the 10 times clock frequency. So I'm doing that two bits at a time. And I also have in here the uh, pixel frequency for 1080p. So we got 1080p, we have uh, 720p and VGA, uh, 480p. And uh, here uh, is the um, multiplier that I um, wrote up previously in the in numbers, a uh, spreadsheet program for Mac. And then uh, this is the input clock frequency in nanoseconds. So 10 nanoseconds is the same as 100 megahertz. And then what we have here is the divider. Again, from the spreadsheet that I was working on earlier, uh, this seemed to be the closest fit I could get. So if you take 100 megahertz, you multiply it by 9.375, you get this megahertz, 937.5 megahertz. And uh, in order to get it exactly uh, 47.25, um, this is the closest fit I can get with just to uh, just the uh, on the input stage I could have gone another route and used like three MMCMs but um, this was close enough I think to make the monitor work correctly or the TV and so uh, here we have uh, I've uh, renamed the the clock output to clock part for this first stage and I'm going to cascade clock part into uh, the next MMCM to get get all the other uh, clock speeds you can see here I'm using the input clock that's 100 megahertz this input clock is 100 megahertz same one we're using all throughout this this first uh, stage and then uh, I, I buffer the clocks just to make sure they're they're synchronized correctly and then uh, here's the second stage 
So I'm taking what I got from the first stage and multiplying it by 10. And then uh, this is uh, the nano nanoseconds that I need uh, to that comes from uh, the partway clock. And so this is the nanosecond equivalent of that. So here, uh, this is the, the clock out uh, fixed point divide. I'm able to get the 0.5 in there. Otherwise, I couldn't match this very closely. And so here's the uh, 1 divide by 1, divide by 2, divide by 5 divide by 10. The reason I skipped over to uh, clock output 4 is because uh, it has this extra cascade thing on it. Not sure how that works yet, but we'll find a, find a reason for it. And uh, so uh, we have the VGA clock, the HDMI clock, the TMDS clock, and the 1080p clock, and then we're uh, redoing the the uh, we're redoing uh, um, the 74.250 clock because uh, all of these might be affected by the MMCM. So I'm just reaffirming it here, and then uh, so. Uh, this is the divides. This is the duty cycle. You can change that to, uh, you know, anywhere within this range. It's basically a percentage, a two digit percentage. And then, uh, um, here, uh, I'm, uh, doing the output stage. So here's the uh, input part and the output part. So I'm naming uh, naming my outputs from this MMCM. I'm using kind of my um, my system of uh, or anybody's system really of uh, putting an underscore instead of a period because we all know periods are important to. Verilog and underscore underscore so VGA in clock zero uh, HD or TM uh, wait TMDS no it's uh, HDMI speed then the half of the HDMI speed the 1080p speed and uh, the uh, 720p speed and then here I'm buffering out all those clocks make sure they're they're synced up with the rest of the system and then uh, all we have to do is save control save and uh, go to uh, our our project is updating and I think I can do a simulation source of this without too much trouble I uh, probably need to put in another stage but you know uh, I probably need to put in another uh, module for doing the, the uh, clock input so We'll continue this later. So I've created my test fixture and uh, I have the code here in Atom. And uh, all I did was uh, just plug in all the outputs and the input just just one input for clock and then the rest are outputs 
and here all I'm doing is initializing the clock bit to zero and then uh, every five nanoseconds it flips its its uh, value from one to zero from zero to one each each uh, five nanoseconds so full full width of the clock is 10 nanoseconds and you just make sure the time scale is right so let's save that and let's go into Vivado and we'll run the simulation as soon as it's done updating okay Hmm. Fail due to earlier errors. Let's go see where those are. So, if we go to messages, what do we get? Two errors. Files to failed. So it wants me to look up the XV log. It's not going to tell me. Compile library path doesn't exist. Hmm. Huh. Test HDMI. Simulation tops. Uh, compiled library does not exist. Huh. What are we doing? Test MMCM. I might have the wrong uh, file included. Uh, see, this is test HDMI. That's right. So we'll just do what it suggests and go look at the uh, file xvlog huh so to get there we have to navigate or there's probably an easier way I don't know what it is right now but new file an open file so if we go up then we go in the simulation sim xv log right here just so you know where it is so here's our error so uh, this is the first time I've tried to use cascading uh, MMCMs so maybe this number right here uh, I could do something with in the second one. It says two. Maybe I need a three there. Hmm. Is already declared. So let me try that. Let's go up to clocks. And then uh, we'll just change two to three. Change two to three in all the right places. Change two to three. That might do it. So let's see. I think that'll do it. Maybe, it, let's see, save it, and then 
Try that again. And run the simulation. Asking me to look again, so. Hmm. Sorry to drag you all through this, but uh, we're we're messing with uh, We need to change the name of that. Uh, looks like it worked though. Need to change the name of clock FB. Oh, I think I know what that is. 164 in clocks. All right. One sixty-four. This one right here. So just change the name. Let's put a two on it. Put a two on it. Now let's see if we can get somewhere. Updating. You know, the more complex the software gets, the more patient you have to be with it. So again, this is the first time I've worked with uh, cascading MMCMs. We'll see if we get the right timing, maybe. So elaborate. It's taking a while. Da 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 da. Da 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 Resize everything. Huh. Nothing's working. My input clock is going. Hmm. Maybe there's just a delay in how long it takes to get going. Yep. That's all it was. So, let's zoom in. So we have these different clock periods. Maybe we need counters though. Huh. So let's back up to a point uh, where, where uh, it's all in sync. Let's go here, go here. So that looks like a, all of them on the rising edge there. So the top one is the 100 megahertz clock. So you can see uh, this one uh, pulses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 10 times, um, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, 
and this is one, two times in the same period. Hmm. And this is one time. And this last one, a real slow one. So, this looks right. It's all time to, you know, in the same, same region here. So if we go out here to, uh, yeah, see this, this, uh, this one has an odd, uh, divider. It's got, uh, a crazy divider, so it doesn't, it's 29 point, you know, something weird. So it's not going to line up with the rest of them. But these guys, they should all line up pretty much like this over and over. Because they're integer, have integer divides. So uh, if we go out further, yeah, see they, they keep lining up. And so, uh, this top one is, is supposed to be like seven, 700 megahertz. So over 700 megahertz. So it's pretty high speed. And then this one, uh, should be double uh, half the number of clock cycles in the same period. It looks like it's doing that. And then this one, uh, that's uh, got, for every three of these, no, for every, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, three of these to every one of these. I don't know, three and a half, or two and a half, I guess. So this is, this is five. This goes five, I think. So you get the idea.